Motor Week is made possible by Rock Auto and Tire Rack. Chrysler's newest flagship is the Imperial. While this is a new sedan, the name dates way back. A version of the famous Chrysler from the 30s was called the Airflow Imperial, and in 1955, Imperial became a separate division of Chrysler. With its so-called $100 million look, it took on the best from Cadillac and Lincoln and boosted Chrysler sales. Chrysler mothballed the name in 1975, after the gas shortage decreased the demand for big luxury cars. While it reappeared briefly from 1981 to 1983 as a two-door coupe, Imperial has traditionally stood for four-door luxury. Clearly, the Imperial is a tough moniker to live up to, but in one way, we know that this car already does. The Chrysler Imperial and the New Yorker Fifth Avenue that shares its floor pan are the biggest Chryslers you can buy. The Imperial's wheelbase is just over 109 inches, while overall length is 203 inches. That's nearly 17 feet of car. Not surprisingly, Chrysler has chosen to wrap its new flagship in a very traditional suit of clothing. There are lots of hard angles and plenty of chrome, and a vinyl Landau roof that could only look good on a big American car. But looking good doesn't always mean craftsmanship, as these exposed attachment screws for the roof's padding will attest. A surprising blemish in light of Chrysler's recent advancements in fit and finish. The designers could also have provided better rearward visibility. The huge B-pillars create substantial blind spots, aggravated by tiny side mirrors. On a more positive note, the Imperial's inside is proof that Americans can design an intimate-feeling, luxurious, yet efficient interior. The dash appears sparse, but is very functional. There's a standard airbag for the driver, and wood trim for the proper luxury look. There's also plenty of room and more luxury features than a suite at a Ritz-Carlton. The optional leather seats are well padded and supportive, though they lack side bolstering. The power adjustments and tilt wheel combine to provide a comfortable position for a driver of any size, as well as an excellent view of the digital gauges. Following proper Luxo boat tradition, there is no tachometer, but this is still one of the more informative gauge packages available in a big American car. The automatic climate controls are compact and efficient, while the standard Infiniti cassette stereo is as idiot-proof as car stereos get. Chrysler designers wisely located the trip computer on an overhead console rather than having it clog up the dash. Big car lovers demand big rear seats. The Imperial provides a rear seat of almost limousine proportions. Even the tallest passengers can ride comfortably for hours in this spacious environment. Unfortunately, the same cannot be said for the trunk. While it's long and wide, it's also very shallow and doesn't provide much more useful space than most mid-sized sedans. Liftover is also quite high. Traditionally, American land yachts have relied on V8 engines for power. The Imperial departs from this tradition by offering Chrysler's new domestically built 3.3-liter V6. It's Chrysler's first normally aspirated passenger car engine to use multi-port fuel injection and produces 147 horsepower and 185 pound-feet of torque. It pulls the Imperial's 3,600-pound front-drive platform from 0 to 60 in a reasonable 9.9 seconds. The quarter-mile takes 17.4 seconds at 79 miles per hour. The engine pulls strongly, but has to really work to move this much car. The four-speed automatic transmission shifts smoothly enough, but lags a bit when you need quick downshifts for highway passing. Four-wheel disc with standard ABS provide the stopping power. 130-foot stops from 60 are the average. There's good stability and the expected big car nosedive. But the mushy pedal field doesn't have the sensitivity we found in newer import luxury machines. And the heavy front plow, slow steering, and substantial body roll keep it well out of the import sedan ranks. But in all fairness, the Imperial is not a new wave. It's a cruiser. One with a smooth, quiet highway ride and an interior sound level of only 66 decibels. If you want heavy-duty luxury and notable street performance, we'd be happy to recommend a good BMW or Lexus dealer. Of course, comparable BMW and Lexus models will cost you a lot more than the Imperial's $25,495 base price. 
Our fully optioned test car cost $28,049. But for that kind of money, we expect more than 18 miles per gallon, especially from a car that the EPA says should give us 18 in the city, 25 on the highway. The Imperial does deliver all the luxury, convenience, and comfort that one expects from a Luxo boat. But its hardware still suffers from many of the K-carisms that have plagued recent Chrysler platforms. Something that Chrysler should consider in light of the formidable competition being fielded by Ford, GM, and the imports. Because in this new era of big luxury cars, American and otherwise, a car must not only be bigger, but better as well.